Let's imagine you're counting how many donuts you have, or how many apples, or how many pies. It might be convenient to count in dozens. Instead of saying 36 donuts, you could just say 3 dozen, and the two are equal. That's because dozen is a word we use, which means you have 12 of something. If you have two dozen, then you have 2 times 12. Dozen is what we use to measure the amount of oftentimes food. The amount of food. Right. So let's think and write down an equation between a dozen and the amount. Or here's what I really mean. We'll use n to represent how many dozen. Is it two dozen? Is it three dozen? How many dozen? And we will use big N to, to represent just the, the number, the actual number. You know, is it 12 uh, donuts or 24 donuts? If you have two dozen, right, two dozen, that means you have how many donuts? 24. And how do we get from 2 dozen to 24? You multiply by 12, like this. Now remember, dozen, the number of dozen, we're going to call that little n, and 24, the, just the number of donuts you actually have, is big N. So here's our equation. Okay. Now, being the reasonable person that you are, you might have actually just 12 donuts in your house or something, right? 12. You might have a dozen. But if you're Cookie Monster, you might have way more donuts. Cookie Monster might have this many. And Cookie Monster's cousin, Cookie Cookie Monster, might have twice this number of donuts. It doesn't make any sense to use a dozen or dozens to count this many donuts because the number of dozens that you have would be nearly as big as the number itself. I mean, this number is huge. So instead, we don't use dozens to count that many donuts. We use something called moles. Okay. And in fact, this number is one mole. One mole is equal to six, roughly six times ten to the twenty-three of something. So we're going to see, in addition to using a dozen as a way to measure the amount of substance you have, like donuts or whatever, right? We can also use moles. So when we use a, a dozen, the equation is the number of dozens that you have, how many dozen you have. Oops. Times 12 is equal to uh, is equal to just the pure number you have, like 24 donuts or 36. When we use moles, moles, which is abbreviated M-O-L, we're going to use the exact same question, equation. How many moles you have? The amount of moles is equal to this big giant number, 6 times 10 to the 23. And that gives you how many donuts you have. Right? Now, writing it's easy to say 12. And it's easy to say a dozen equals 12, right? We took this number 12, and we renamed it a dozen. And we say we have two dozen, or three dozen. So we should do the same thing with this value, right? This huge amount. We rename it, and what's the name we give it? We call it Avogadro's number, not avocado, right? Commence joke about avocados. We call it, uh, whoops, Avogadro. It's Avogadro's number. The guy sure did dream big. Yuck, yuck, yuck. And so we name this number Avogadro's number, and our equation then, we could simply write it this way. 
n, the number of moles you have, is equal, oops, n times Avogadro's number gives you just the pure number that you actually have. Or if we isolate for number of moles, we get the pure number you have over Avogadro's number. Now you might be wondering why this is, po I mean, Cookie Monster, right? Not a real thing. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry if you thought Cookie Monster was real. I hope, I hope I'm not breaking it to you for the first time. But Cookie Monster is not real. And you would never have that huge number, 6, followed by like all those zeros. You would never have that many donuts or cookies. So what could we possibly use to count that many? I mean, what do we have that many of? Where do you look in the world and you say, there's one mole of donuts? It's when you're counting things that are small, like atoms. When you go out and you look at the world, you very rarely see somewhere like 12 hydrogen atoms, something on that order of magnitude. That's so small. If you just look at your little pinky, you have just in your pinky so, so many more. I mean, 12, that doesn't even compare to how many atoms or particles there are in your pinky. When you look at the world, you see something more like this. You see atoms in uh, huge, huge, huge amounts, like roughly one mole or so, more than one mole even. And so that's what we use when we count in moles. We count atoms. Moles measures the amount of substance that you have. So remember, if I tell you you have two moles, you can take that number of moles, multiply it by Avogadro's number, that giant thing, this big thing here, and now you have once more the number of particles uh, in the substance. So, right, two moles, you multiply, whoops, two moles, multiply by Avogadro's number, six times 10 to the 23, and how many particles would you have? Now, here's the thing about donuts that you probably know if you're a donut lover like me. Not every donut is created equally. Some are these kind of circular, you know, somewhat modest-sized donuts. And then there are these other gigantic, like, figure eight donuts. Have you ever had those? And they're so big, and it's like twice a donut. I mean... This thing is like two times the size of this wimpy little donut on the left. So if you're choosing 12, if you're choosing a dozen, right, you want to get 12 donuts, which are you going to have? Are you going to get 12 of the little ones or 12 of the like monster donuts, the huge ones? You choose these if you really, really want donuts because you get more when you have 12. Not all donuts are made equally. And the same is true about particles. Some particles, like let's imagine hydrogen, a single atom of hydrogen, it's pretty small. By comparison, oxygen is like, you know, uh, 16 times bigger than hydrogen. 16 times more massive, in fact. So the same is true of atoms. That means if you take one mole of hydrogen, a bunch of hydrogens, and then you stack up one mole of oxygens, when you weigh or take the mass of your hydrogen, you're going to get something like one gram. And when you take the mass of your oxygen, you're going to get 16 grams because they're 16 times more massive. It's not surprising. I mean, oxygen is much bigger. So what's the difference between the two? The difference is how much mass hydrogen has per mole and how much mass oxygen has per mole. We call that the molar mass, and it's simply the mass in grams or kilograms per mole. Now here's a question, which will be bigger, the molar mass of oxygen or the molar mass of hydrogen? The answer is clearly oxygen. When you use the formula for oxygen, you have 16 grams per one mole. And if you use the formula for hydrogen, maybe I should say oxygen, hydrogen, you get one gram in each mole. Just like the donuts, right? 
Some are more massive, others are less massive. 